Hello, hello, YouTube. I am live. People know who I am because since I've been doing these lives, I've been getting a outreach um, from um, a further sphere of those who are subscribed to my channel. So I want to welcome you here and I want to say please like and subscribe to this channel. Um, and also at the end of this video, I will share with you some other goodies that I can provide to you for uh, you staying in touch with what I talk about. So, uh, you know, I don't know why this is a topic of discussion, but I noticed on Sunday, um, my Facebook timeline was um, filled with these memes of Spencer Haywood. And to what age you are, you may not know who he is, but um, since I am a child of the 70s and I was born in 1973, I do know who Spencer Haywood is. And, um, and also my father was um, a basketball fan and he was a basketball player. So this running story that um, was that's resurfaced on the internet, um, it actually, the first time I saw it was in 2016. And for some reason, it resurfaced. And, um, and I did see a new article. So it seemed like someone repurposed the article. And that's the great thing about social media is that something that was old can be, it, it is new, it's new news. So the story in 2016 um, was uh, this former basketball player. He was a, uh, started his career in the late 60s, I believe, 69, um, and um, and was uh, I know I remember him when he was with the Seattle SuperSonics and then of course with the Lakers. And um, when he was in the Lakers, that was the late 70s, early 80s. And like I said, my father being a, a Lakers fan, was there, I was familiar with who Spencer Haywood is. But going back to the story, so the story talked about that in 1973, the great year, the year I was born, um, he was offered a 10% stake in Nike. And yes, Nike, the, the sports apparel company, the sneaker company, um, Just Do It, Michael Jordan, the list goes on and on. What he was offered in 1973 when it was a, a small, um, you know, startup company, um, a stake in the company. And he was actually advised from his agent to take the money of $100,000 versus the 10% stake. So the story that resurfaced in 2016, um, uh, resurfaced, that started in 2016, first time I saw it, resurfaced again, and um, just a few days ago, um, said that he, that 10% stake would have been worth a billion dollars. And so the memes that were going on in my, you know, um, Facebook timeline was like, Oh, that was such a bad decision. And that is why I'm here to, to talk about asset accumulation and why many of us don't really understand how it works. Um, we really think that it is a tool that only a certain elite end of, group of individuals um, know and, and know how to use it. And that may have been the case many moons ago but with so much information at our fingertips, um, we have the opportunity to not make the mistake as the Spencer Haywoods. And so this video is not to knock his decision um, because I'm not going to have pity for, the, um, for Spencer Haywood, but I can understand why one, he relied on uh, the advice from someone who didn't have his best um, interest. And um, many of us historically, if, if you're African American, um, the topic of money, the topic of understanding money, even in 2018, 
We are still behind a totem pole. We do not understand wealth building. We do not understand legacy planning. We only know how to plan for next week. And we are only concerned with the dollar we make today. And although that may be the, you know, um, that may be the case for other races of people, but it's a very common case with us. And so even today, um, in 2018, many of us still had that problem. And so going back to Spencer Haywood, you have to understand that many people don't understand how assets work because we have only been told to focus on income. And although income does handle, hello, how you doing digital media? Although the income can handle the bills that we have today, the problem with that scenario, with you just being concerned with the income you, you would get bringing today, if you do not know how to take that income and, and funnel that income in a asset that can produce you money, meaning more income, what happens is, is that you will always be working for income. So at the time that Spencer Haywood made the decision, he was at, you know, he was at the top of his game. You know, um, he, he was a, a, a um, popular basketball player, proficient at the game, good at the game, one of the top players. And what happens is, is that many of us live in the moment. And we think that the way things are now are the, th the way that things are always going to be. And I really think that that may have been the mindset that Spencer Haywood may have had. I wouldn't be surprised if his agent had told him, hey, you will get, you will get other opportunities. You will get better opportunities. And, um, and so he missed out on that. And so um, I did a video that I always reference to because it's a, it's a, it's a very eye-opening a video and it said that you being debt free is relative to your income and the reason why I made that video is because many of us only understand how to um, become debt free based on us working a job that produces income we do not understand how to buy an asset or create an asset especially in 2018 you can actually create assets that can produce you money and so when we do understand you have celebrities you have famous figures who understand asset accumulation um and i'm going to get to that but i want to just stay on missing opportunities and not understanding asset accumulation spencer haywood is not the only one in the industry of basketball who have missed out on these opportunities um many of them we do not know some basketball players are transparent enough to tell us the opportunities that they missed one being meta world peace I know him as Ron Artest. Ron Artest came up during the time when, you know, in his heyday, you know, I say we was around the same age. He from tri-state area, New York. Meta World Peace, as many people may know him now, I know him as formerly known as Ron Artest. He even said it. Ron Artest had the opportunity. I saw this on a YouTube video, and I can't remember if it was with The Breakfast Club I can't remember, but he even said that he had the opportunity. Vitamin water came to him and wanted him to promote vitamin water. And unfortunately, they said, but we are not going to pay you. What we're going to offer you is a 10% stake in our company. And Ron Artest said it himself. He said, I'm a young kid from hey how you doing uh, my miracle ron artest said himself better world peace whatever you want to call him he said i'm a young he said i'm a i'm a young kid grew up in queensbridge projects 
I didn't know nothing about no 10% stake in no company. Like, I, I didn't know what that was. I just wanted the money. And so once again, he was advised by those around him to not take the 10% in vitamin water. Now, we all know how that worked. Of course, he missed out on that. 50 cents, say what you want, call him a thug, call him a, uh, 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 a former drug dealer, call him what you, you want. But the one thing that exactly, exactly, and unfortunately, the poverty mindset is real. And if you do not get um, access to other information, and you have to seek it. Because the sad thing is, is that many of us think, and I'm going to go back to 50 Cent, but I just want to say this. Many of us think that, let me get the money. What happens is, like many of those ball players, once they, the money comes, it's so much stuff coming at them that they don't have time to be a student of the information of wealth. And so people think that it is silly to try to learn about the um, how wealth works when you have no money. No, you have to start here. But going back to 50 Cent, so say what you want about 50. Call him a, a thug, a former drug dealer. But one thing I know about 50, at least that I can see from, you know, social media and, and, and not even social media, but when I say social media, meaning when it shares with us the investments that he's made in terms of the the the, the TV shows that um that are making him a, a a bunch of money because he is the executive producer, what have you, and we all know if you whether you know this or not, uh, Fifty Cents was a stakeholder in Vitamin Water, and we all know how that turned out. Um, so going back to Spencer Haywood, now what a lot of people do not know, because like I said, I'm a child of the 70s, I'm very familiar with him, you know, um, he was married, formerly married to Iman, the supermodel, the, the black supermodel who was uh, married to David Bowie, and of course we all know that David Bowie died, but let me tell you this. Iman understands asset cre um, accumulation because although David Bowie may be dead, his legacy lives. And she is the primarily the primary stakeholder in David Bowie Inc. What is David Bowie Inc? Meaning that publishing anything that David Bowie owns the royalties or what have you, his estate, which is she's in control of, she gets that income. And so when you create an asset or when, because a lot of people think that creating assets or buying, um, <clears throat> buying assets is only for the rich. But see, the great thing about this time, this day and age, you can create an asset. And that is where I want to show you because I'm not going to talk about nothing and not tell you what I'm doing. So even myself, even myself, although it's on a small scale, it still produces money for me. And that is my blog. See, the, the only way you can get to asset creation, you have to have a vision for yourself. And so, and become a student of this information. And so I am a student. And although the rewards of it <clears throat> may not flourish immediately, I understand the, um, the, the process of staying steadfast and, and, um, and continuing with the process. And so there are many things that I have created that produce me money that I created, not that I went out and purchased, that I created. One being my blog. If you haven't been there, www.yourmoneymentor.com. Let me tell you something about that blog. That blog, I created it in 2011. I still get the hecklers and the silly people that um, email me, take the time out of their day to email me and tell me how 
hideous and ugly the blog is. You're right. It's hideous. There are other blogs that are much prettier, much cuter. But let me tell you about that blog. I put so much content on that blog, especially in the area of credit repair, debt management, debt elimination. So if you have any of those problems, not only did I write the book, but I also have tons of content on that, on that subject, on that blog. And see, people who understand business and understand SEO and understand uh, a website indexing, they know that blog is very profitable. And so I'm not talking about the little AdSense um, ads that are on there. That, that makes me pennies. Like literally, I don't get no money from AdSense with that. <clears throat> My phone is dying. So I may blink out. Um, but I have... Um, uh, and I will not advertise who advertise on that website weekly, not once in a blue moon weekly. And that advertising um, ranges from 250 to 300 um, three, $250 to $300. Now, that ain't no big money, but I tell you this, I appreciate any little money that I do not have to work for. Because, see, that's money that comes. As long as I have that blog up, as long as those articles are indexed into the search engines, because that is the great thing about Google. You cannot knock indexing. And so those advertisers who advertise, they understand that. And they understand search engine optimization or what have you. So that is an asset that I created in 2011 that in 2018, it still produces income. And so let me tell you this. If I didn't have that vision for myself, I would have been working somebody else's vision. And see, the thing is, is that if you do not understand your value, you can never get to the point of creating your own assets. Because what will happen is you will be always creating other people's assets. And so during the time of 2011, I had other people who had offered me to write on their blogs. Would you leverage your credit? Well, see, the thing is, that's a good question. Digital media said, would you uh, build your credit uh, first before building the asset? See, the thing, or leveraging your credit. Um, the thing with building um, the asset, especially something that is like a blog, takes minimal money. And I can tell you what the startup costs were for that blog. It was pretty much, I bought a domain name, which was 99 cent, and got hosting with WordPress through GoDaddy. At that time, could have been about $7.99. Um, and that was it. That was all the cost incurred. The rest was my sweat equity. So when digital media said, would you leverage credit? You don't need credit for that. Those costs, and, I, and, and I'm, I'm being real, and let me just say this, and I paid someone on Fiverr to do the little banner. Now, now this time, it looks cheesy, but in 2011, it was kind of something, you know? But I, I say, you know, I haven't changed it. Now, just a few months ago, I wanted to lower um, my hosting Um. Building an asset takes no money. Now, it depends on what other type of assets. Now, if we're talking about purchasing real estate assets, yeah, you need to leverage your credit. But see, it goes back to what I said. Sometimes many individuals can create the small wins in life. See, many of us want the big kahuna. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Another asset 
let me just tell you my book say what you want wrote it in 2011 2011 uh, uh republished again in 28 2013 this book still sells i had to mail some off before i did this live and i wish i had um showed the packaging so i'm not just saying i'm doing stuff you can't see it i'm gonna show the receipts um the book still sells that's an asset me creating this book now i don't remember but I know that it was less than, I say, $50. Because all I paid for was somebody to create the cover, the cover, uh, the cover, the front and the back, and um, and to format it to go on Kindle, because you can get it to Kindle form. Now, back then, now it's simple. Like, now, you know, you could pretty much just upload it yourself. But back then in 2011, there was a certain type of Kindle format that you had to know how to do. And so it was called Mobi. Or I, I forget the name of it. But anyway, I hired somebody in India and they did the formatting and it was uploaded into um, KDP, which is Kindle. And so that is the asset that I created. Because let me tell you this. Um, so digital media, I hope I answered your question. So if you, if you trying to go after big wins, yeah, you may need to leverage your credit, but, but there are small things that you can start that can morph into big stuff. And that's where vision comes in. See what Nike had back in the early seventies and the late sixties, when they started, they had vision, very small company with a big vision and, and you couldn't, and, and I bet you how many people who may have knew the founders or the starters of Nike back then in the late 60s, never would have saw them being a billion dollar company of what they are now. And see, that that is the problem, is that other people don't see your vision, but you have to see your vision. And that's why I'm saying, don't despise the small beginnings. Don't despise small stuff and thinking it's small stuff. Because the sad thing in the day and time of now with social media, whatever, people are big on saying, your stuff is little, it ain't making no impact, and it's somebody doing something bigger, better, and badder. And what happens is, is that you start to disregard all the stuff that you've did when really it's still making an impact. That's why I still, I'm glad that YouTube has lies because I saw what the videos were doing when I was creating the videos and uploading them. And I'm like, wow, imagine what I could do with a live format. That's why when I originally, when I first started this video, I introduced who I am because I'm noticing now that I'm doing more lives, my reach is getting larger. So a lot of people do not know who I am. A lot of people do not know that um, I, there's tons, it's over 300, 400, I forget the numbers of videos on this channel to help you rebuild your credit, to help you eliminate debt. Um, the list goes on and on dealing with debt collectors. They're right on this channel for free. I give you, if you're on my email communication list, you get my book for free. If you want the physical copy of the book, you can go to freebook.yourmoneymentor.com. Just pay for shipping. You get the book for free. Um, why am I saying all this? Because it goes back to um, knowing your worth. I'm going to share another real life story with myself. So I said all that stuff that regarding credit and this, that, and the other. Let me tell you, about a year ago on LinkedIn... I will not reveal names um, because I don't want to burn bridges, but I had a very well-known um, financial literacy company. Now, these are major players. Um, they provide financial, financial literacy content to school districts, banking institutions, heavy hitters. You know, I, I'm not talking about, you know, some, you know, YouTubers or this, that. I mean, heavy hitters. And um, one of the um, higher-ups contacted me, said, hey, Lorelia, we like what you did and credit or whatever. Because the thing is, is that people watching you, and you know they watching you. 
So, so they had looked at my content or what have you, and we would like to set up a time and date for us, for you, you know, for you to talk to, um, for us to talk to you. We would love to present you with an opportunity uh, to partner with you. And so I took their call. It was a, it was a really a, a three way. It was me and two higher ups. A lady who contacted me and one of our higher up. I think he was a C. He was CEO. C. C. F. He was somewhere in the top leadership uh part of the company and um and so they were saying um Lorelia um we would like for you to write content for our financial literacy um in the areas of credit and uh debt elimination for our company mm, nope can't do that like I'm not I'm not writing nobody oh, the only person's content I'm writing is my own I'm not writing nobody else's content <laughs> I'm not writing nobody else's content so, um, do you hear me? I ain't writing nobody's content. So, um, they contact me, wanted me to write their content. I said, no. So then they said, well, will you be willing to read? No, no, no. First they said, would you be willing to review the content? I had no problem, you know, cause they were like, write your ticket. So I said, Hey, you know, I mean, I'm, you know, I, of course I will be working from home. Um, it, it will be leisurely, at, you know, whenever they had the work, I will look it over. Sure, I had no problem with that. Then they said, that's when they started the conversation of, will you, would you, we would like for you to write for us. I ain't writing for nobody. And so then they said, and, 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 and let me tell you how the, how the, how the uh, conversation went left. Um, because they, I, st I said, the only way that I will write for y'all is, was I didn't say y'all, but one, I need to know um, how this would affect um, the writings that I have currently did uh, now, you know, um, because currently right now, I, I'm doing writings and I have books or what have you, because see, this is what people do. They'll end up muzzling you. Like if you don't understand how this works, asset accumulation, what they'll end up doing, and this is called intellectual property. Because see, when I start talking about asset, asset creation, it has to do with your intellect. It has to do with your IP. See, many people think their IP ain't worth much. And the reason why is because many of us have been indoctrinated in the school system who tells us that IP ain't worth nothing. And now with social social media, it's even on the on the hundredth power. Cause now you got all these people who want to compare you to ten other people, and then they want to have you to believe that that um that your IP ain't worth nothing. So that's why you have to be headstrong and know. And the reason why I'm pointing that out because it has to do with your brain power. It has to do with your intellectual IP. But anyway, I started talking to them people, talking about well, if I'm a right for y'all, I. I need to um, um we need to talk about licensing because that means um you may want to consider licensing my information um uh i started talking contracts Woo! that conversation went left <laughs> exactly yeah see a lot i'm glad digital b media said she'll know nothing about that see that's the problem most people don't see that's what i'm saying i'm a student of this information i live and breathe this stuff i'm not looking for accolades from no social media to to um reward me with what i know and what i don't know i just i just told y'all i born in 7, 1973 i'm a 45 year old woman <laughs> you know, and, and you know, I'm I'm okay with mine. Like like I I do this on the on social media because it allows me to reach other people. But I know who I am and I know whose I am. And I'm telling you, digital media, media. I'm glad that you've said that because I'm telling you, I'm I, you know, there are so many people out there. There's so and I I don't want to go as far as saying they're charlatans. But all I will say is that a lot of people will see value in you and they're never going to tell you that. They will not tell you that. What they would rather do is profit from you. See, and so that's why I'm, I'm blessed, I'm covered, because I have had people who have poured into me. And, and so I, when I see it, 
I just, I just, you know what? I just step away. I don't, I don't need to, I don't need to come at nobody. I don't need to serve them. I don't need to tell them like it is. All I need to do is just give them a long handle spoon. Cause I'm going to tell you right now, I've had many opportunities where people have came to me. Oh, I, I, you know, the, the last one, I got a very large platform. I reach, you know, I, I reach hundreds of thousands of people every day. And so the person is going to tell me, um, first it was a conversation of partnering. And then once I spoke to um, someone else, um, part of their organization, it turned into, um, well, we would like to hire you. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, this is what was, what was odd. You gonna hire me on my own content. So let me understand this. five percent um and so saying so once they started talking about oh we're gonna hire you and pay you a salary get this you gonna pay me a salary on my own content so i created the content this is my intellectual property and you gonna pay me just so i teach it on your platform man if you don't get out of here see that's what i'm saying you gotta know the, the thing is is that now with the internet and social media if you become a student of marketing and i really mean a student you you can you can get in front of the people you need to get in front of because let me tell you don't be deceived by very large numbers and and large followings i i just listened to a girl um I just listened to a girl on YouTube. I can't pronounce her name.